Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two two to three, sometimes four. Maybe four. Supposed to be four. (laughs) Definitely supposed to be four. It will eventually be four. Old guys talk about old games. It's Original Flavor Wednesday, and we have come to a pretty, pretty, good, pretty good spot. Pretty list. big game. I think it's a pretty big game. IGN's 14th ranked game, mm. Final Fantasy II. Right. Right. <laughs> it's a game. It's on the list. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it. It's so big, Tyler. It's so big. This game is oh. so big that I just can't take it all at once. Bear, that's, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big that I wanted to split it into two parts, which is unprecedented. We've only done that for The Walking Dead, mm-hmm. which I and still... We didn't even mean to do that, right. really. We just looked down. Oh, it's getting long. And we barely scratched the surface of this game. So I figured because this game is so big, and this is a beloved game uh, for both of us, and our guest host, and our maybe to arrive guest host, Mm -hmm. that we should break it into two episodes. So, but more importantly, I need more time to finish Earthbound. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So this is a great excuse to, uh, to do that. I I also want Earthbound to be a two part episode. I do. I'm all for that. One where just, I talk about it and Mm -hmm. then one where everybody else can talk about it. We record it separately. (laughs) <laughs> you just you just do part one all by yourself. And People then, would love just hearing just an hour of me just talking aimlessly about Earthbound. Part two, the second part of that is the ne- the following week, like me, Josh, and Miller just sit around and be like, man, Tyler really loves Earthbound. Well, the thing, <laughs> the thing about it is if anybody else does the episode with Tyler and says even the most remotely negative thing about it, he is liable to stand up, knock the table over, and start beating the shit out of everybody. Because he loves that game. I'm very, that much. I'm very violent and a very adept Super. fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Super violent. Well, you got to consider your opponents. People too. have people <laughs> have likened me unto Iron Fist. So it, it's, yeah, it's that's pretty much yeah. pretty much. It's true. You look really good in green and yellow. Mm. I thought I thought you were being Sprite Man <laughs> at Halloween, but <laughs> you're actually Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Yeah, I've seen you threaten somebody's life at least once. It was over a computer. It was over the internet, a game on the internet. <laughs> yeah. An yeah. online game where you threaten to kill somebody, but I don't know. You get, get in the room with him, you might just kick his ass. I don't know. <laughs> Man, he, he was messing with two loves of my life, D&D and whatever that other thing was. Probably some, Meg, probably some girl. Something, yeah. Yeah. I think it was one of the, no, it, it was one of the cats, wasn't it? It had something to do with a cat. That that was a whole different thing. That was that was, that was what filled Meg full of rage. Oh, that's when Meg threatened to kill somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm your beard host, Tyler. Hey, and Tyler. so we're we breaking down Final Fantasy II, mm-hmm. also known as Final Fantasy IV. Yeah, if to, you're, to Miller's great anger. Yeah, yeah. If you're <laughs> if you're a snob about it, like I am. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, if you haven't played the game, these next two weeks are going to be spoiler tastic because breaking down characters and storylines. Let's not spoil it. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Let's, let's, let's just talk. About, let's just spend like five minutes talking about the game. And there's magic. There's a. There's this one magic spell. No, uh, spoiler. Damn it. Okay. There's, there's girl, some magic spells. She has green hair. No uh, spoiler. <laughs> there are these twins. Spoiler. Uh. <laughs> Spoony bars. <laughs> Sp- oh God, super spoiler. Yeah, that's a big one. But so spoilers, and now that you've heard that, mm. here's an intro story. That intro story slash question that reminded me a lot of things that happen frequently in Final Fantasy II. Mm-hmm. Do you guys know how you want to be buried? There are people buried in Final Fantasy II. 
oh, there's a lot of people dying in Final Fantasy. II. <laughs> Burial yeah. isn't really a thing yeah. because they disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess all bodies in the Final Fantasy verse just kind of fade away. Yeah, I've got a. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but I've got a bone to pick. Yeah. About, about that as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I know where you're going with yeah. this, and it's all yeah, it's a fairly large plot, uh-huh. hole, but whatever. <laughs> how do you, how do you want to be buried, Tyler? I want you to start. Well, see, I what made me I, thinking about farms when we think of this, and mm. then thinking about being buried reminds me of another friend, Brandon of Axelay fame, because I I grew up with Brandon. I've known Brandon since fourth or fifth grade. And tropical Capricorn fame. Of yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. And I remember when Brandon was very, very into Puff Daddy and golf and... Um, Did you say golf? Golf. <laughs> Jetta Golfs. <laughs> he was really into Puff Daddy and golf. golf. <laughs> yep, and other various okay. rappers and... Um, Old man sports. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Furthering his career yeah. on the on the course. <laughs> he was really big into Nelly and bocce, bocce ball. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one day we were we were driving somewhere. Our mom was taking us somewhere, and he's like, "So I think I figured out how I wanted my funeral to go." I'm like, "All right, like seventh grade, Brandon. How do you want your funeral to go?" And like at the time, his dad like owned like a limo service, right? So he's like, "I'm gonna have one of my dad's limos." And it's gonna be like it's gonna be like like traffic on Paducah is just gonna like stop. I'm gonna go from one side of Paducah to the other. I'm gonna be in the back of this like stretch limo, and all you guys will be there. I mean, all the ones that are still alive, and you're all gonna be in like everybody's gonna be in black Hummers. You're gonna be escorted by in black Hummers. Mm, we all get one. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna be you a, get a Hummer. You get a Hummer. I'm gonna be in a solid gold casket. <laughs> uh huh. Like a and, pharaoh. Yeah. And and okay, I'm gonna be inside. And have like a dollar bill tux that I'm buried in. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm gonna have like my big Bertha driver tucked into my arm, and I'm gonna be hugging West Side with both hands and his arms crossed in front of his chest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome, Brandon. <laughs> You're like, one of those things is gonna happen. Traffic will stop in Paducah <laughs> because um, there really isn't a whole lot of that. So that's already covered. I feel like if you ask Brandon today, the answer would be the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's exactly, like if he's he's gonna hear this, he's gonna be like, yeah, that's good, that's right. Yeah, that's what, that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> he might have moved on to like a Nike driver at this point, but otherwise, everything fits. Because <laughs> I remember, because he was he he still is pretty good at golf, and he was very very into it middle school, as illustrated by the I uh, brought up before the Tasmanian Devil bust playing golf that he was mm-hmm. very proud of. He had his golf bag in his room, and it held golf clubs. But it also held a collection of really gross socks in the bottom. Yeah, because when he was what, done, what was that that's about? where he kept. That's, yeah. Oh, when, when he was done playing golf, I see he take uh, his socks take sock off, off, put it in there, come in it, and oh, put it in the bottom oh. of the golf bag. <laughs> well, now that's just a me. way of masturbation I've never understood, but it seems really popular. I don't think you do it with the sock. You don't do it with the sock, right? I don't know. You tell me. I've tried it both ways. I don't like it either way. Miller, yeah. you've tried it with a sock. I've, yeah, I was like, well, I've no, I don't like this at all. I don't see how that's. I don't think you're supposed to do it like that. No, I can't imagine. I, uh-uh. I, you know, it's a very pop culture thing to to see on American Pie and bullshit like that. But mm-hmm. I can't see where it's very effective. Mm-mm. I mean, no, I can't. If anyone out there comes in a sock, please call. Or you're married to Raggedy Ann. Let us know. <laughs> Or you just like to pretend you're married to Raggedy Ann. <laughs> That's fine, too. We want to hear from you. And I, let's see, how I originally, uh, I I don't want to be buried. I don't want people to spend any money on me at all when I die. Because I'm dead. You know, don't spend money. Can we put you in a big, giant sock? <laughs> that in, in a giant golf bag. <laughs> That's how. If I'm going that way, then we're all buried that way. We're all dressed as sperm, put into a sock, on top of a giant statue of a golf. Bag. Sign me up. We can probably get a group discount. <laughs> I'm in. Well, originally I wanted to donate my body to science, but I heard I hear that is a huge elaborate process. Like really, it it will cost you money to get your body to science. Oh yeah, like what? that doesn't make sense. So, um. I heard about, I think it's it's like the Artem, not the Artemis. Neptune. Neptune, yeah. Neptune Society. Mm-hmm. It's like 200 bucks, they come and get you, and they just throw you in the sea. Mm-hmm. That sounds fine, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think anything else, like cremation would be fine, but that's going to be expensive, and eh, eh, no thanks. I just think it seems silly. 
I think cremation is fairly inexpensive compared to a giant casket and all the solid gold that comes along with. Limo. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've got a I've got a fire pit back behind my shed. I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> if you're interested, <laughs> I'm not sure that's the kind of fire that'll get it done. You may, you, you may be still left with a feet and a few fingers. Yeah. <laughs> we just bind Dave up with twine. <laughs> they take him out of the fire pit. <laughs> In a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Your final resting place. <laughs> Why are you crying so much, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just cramming your dead husband into a two by two fire pit. This is yeah. this He's is just what, stomping me in. <laughs> this, this is what he wanted. Okay, I mean, <laughs> he wanted to be waffle stomped. <laughs> <laughs> Do not mourn this dead man <laughs> as he moves on to Valhalla. <laughs> I'm Dave. I'm your bespectacled host. And Tyler, um, I guess I also really don't want anything elaborate. If there was a way that I could um, digitize myself and have myself uploaded to the internet, mm. uh, I would do that. Um, that. That's Jacob's impression of you. Jacob didn't actually think like like one day at like 17, you just walked out of the internet one day. Out of the <laughs> server farm. You just walked out in weird sign style. Pretty much how it went. But I was 14 when I walked out of the internet. Show you how much Jacob knows about me. <laughs> Guy thinks he knows everything. But yeah, if you if I could be digitized and uploaded to the internet, I'm sure they'll have that all figured out by the time I die mm-hmm. next week. So <laughs> wasn't there a Johnny Depp movie made about something similar to that not long ago? Yeah. What, it was, right. it, was his it, consciousness. See, is, and, oh, I'm not talking about my consciousness. I want my physical form. To be uploaded to the internet. <laughs> so you can just go to davesdeadbody.com and it's just. <laughs> We're not even going to have websites by then, Tyler. That's silly talk. It would be like that episode of uh, Futurama. You get a blank robot and download your body on the robot. <laughs> so everybody can have their own Dave. <laughs> that would be so much fun. Right? Right? Every, then we, Tyler, if you did that too, we could just podcast into oblivion just forever. Just do Tadpog forever. I'm in. I'm in. I'm, do all the games. We'll be done. We've done all the games. And we'll be robots, so we won't really have to buy food or love anybody. Or so sleep. we don't have to pay so for you could anything. Do, you could do one a day. You would be finished quicker than you think because you'd be doing them at a really rapid pace. And if you're a fucking robot, you can probably play the games a lot faster, yeah, too. Yeah, you just upload yeah. the game into and you know everything that's going on about it. All right, so let's do that. We're doing let's, this the wrong let's way. Let's work right on now. that. <laughs> we should oh, we should be enjoying life now, and then when we're robots later, we'll do this show. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's up, Miller? Nothing. What's up? You plan on dying soon? No. That's good. I don't plan on it, but <laughs> very few people I feel like, hmm, unless you're a superhero in a in a movie, you don't wake up going, Today's a good day to die. I feel like that's not a thought that a lot of people have. But I have thought about I, how I want to be buried because I think that um, funerals in general are just weird as shit. Mm-hmm. So this would be a good question to have Nicole on because no, Nicole feels the same way. See, my wife actually went to mortuary school. Really? And yes. No, I didn't know that. She did, and uh, she was going to be a funeral director. And we've had this discussion a couple of times, and she she always says, you know, a funeral is not about you. You're dead. It's for the people you leave behind. And I'm like, Fuck you. I'm the one that died. I feel like my last <laughs> wishes should be taken into account. I don't want an I, I don't want to be I don't want an open casket at all. I don't want my dead body being in the same room as a bunch of other people in a casket or not. I don't want a casket for that matter. I don't want to be embalmed. I don't want to be when I die, wherever I fell, just like pick me up, put me in a pine box, bury me wherever's closest and easiest. Throw a party, everybody get drunk, and tell stories about all the goofy shit that I used to do. But do not, for the love of God, go poking around on my dead, lifeless body because I think that is just. I don't gross know. I kind of want to take out all your organs and paint you up <laughs> so you look good, and then put you in a box where we can just look at you for a long time. Uh huh. Yeah. I think that's probably the best way to go. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And like I've, <laughs> and I'm sure somebody will send hate mail. But like I'm not an organ donor. I, the idea of it just weirds me out. <laughs> it weirds me the hell out. I'm sorry. I, I didn't don't, know that. I don't want somebody. Well, having, no one wants your liver. So. <laughs> no, that's not going to do. Any, <laughs> it's not doing me a hell of a lot of good. I don't think it's going to do anybody else any. But like, just the thought of somebody else with my kidney. It's like or whatever. Like eyeballs. I think now aren't they a 
legitimate thing that can like, be taken. Yeah, like part of your retina, yeah. Yeah, man. I don't know. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Somebody looking at me with your eyes. Yeah, there's, that's a, a horror movie waiting to happen. <laughs> no. So, yeah, I want to just be left alone. When I die, just leave me the hell alone. Yes, I would like people. I, I want to know that people gave a shit and we get together and tell stories about you know the time I did something that we shouldn't talk about on the show. No. But you won't know. You'll be dead though. <laughs> well, you don't know what's happening. Yeah, let's there, not. Man. Let's not do it. He's <laughs> dead. He won't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I know that's what's going to end up happening when I die. It's like, well, I know what he wanted to do, but now he's dead. What does he care? <laughs> Throw that funeral. Let's stuff him and put him around the gaming table so he'll always be there. But in a bear pose. But in like a stuffed bear pose. You're also naked. <laughs> we'll give you a huge dick, though. It'll be so big. We'll just crudely taxidermy like a horse's dick on you. So you're, you're going to need nothing, then, is what you're saying. You're just, it's just going to be me. All me. I wouldn't mind a cardboard cutout of me at the gaming table mm-hmm. from here on after, but uh, no, mm. I don't, no, please, please don't stuff me. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. I want to be taken to the world's largest blender. I don't know where that is. <laughs> I want all my loved ones, all my survived loved ones to like have to gather around and just drop me in that blender and just turn it on. It's the best episode of Will It Blend that there's ever been. <laughs> Will It Blend, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it I has hope to be so. like it has to be oh I want it, I want it to be a feat of engineering. Like Felix Baumgartner like height above in space. Uh-huh. Way up high, and that's when we drop your dead body and have to aim it down <laughs> into the blender. How about a big slide instead? Can we do a big slide instead? <laughs> My dead body just tumbling down the slide. <laughs> I would think if you went all the way into the atmosphere and tried to drop him into anything, there wouldn't be a whole lot left to blend when it was done. <laughs> It'd have to be on. It'd already be on by the time he just fell in. Or like a like an Office Depot shredder is at the end, of, like a giant shredder just at the end of the slide, just slide right in that. <laughs> <laughs> Never have to worry about identity theft. Like the wood chipper from Fargo. You just come flying uh-huh. out and just cover the people. Uh-huh. And, this got dark. <laughs> Why did he want us to watch this? <laughs> this got really dark really fast. <laughs> Jeez. Or maybe it, maybe maybe I do have a funeral and then like where everyone's sitting and like the floor all of a sudden falls out and they like have to fight a clone of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's like beefed up on like bull shark testosterone. <laughs> they don't have any weapons, but like I've got all these guns and swords. <laughs> I don't actually kill anybody. I just want to give them a thrill. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the Dave that drank all the TGRI ooze. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of it. Just at your funeral, it. yeah, nega Dave just tearing down the dock. Now, I think I want your consciousness uploaded to a computer because I want to be able to filter through the code mm-hmm. that makes you come up with this shit. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with that guy? Oh. <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> There's the syntax error. There we go. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. It's been Fine. a good episode. Yep. <laughs> now been... for part two. <laughs> so final. No, go ahead. Let's take this jacket off. Real okay. Quick. Edit. Because it's loud as shit. The jacket is? Yeah, can you not hear it? I can now, and you're taking it off. <laughs> Sorry about that. So Final Fantasy 2. Yep. Slash 4. Shut Slash four. up. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up with that? What's your animosity with, with 4? Because I have a cartridge at home. It's yeah. red, and it says Final Fantasy 2. Yeah. That's the game that I played. When it was released in Japan, yeah. it was Final Fantasy 4. Right. We don't fucking live in Japan. We don't. Apparently, we weren't good enough to get 3 and 5. We weren't. Mm-hmm. So we only got or 4 two, and 6. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I guess not. But 2 is 2. We've got 1, 2, and 3. That's no, no, what we got. No, 2 is 4. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm saying if, two is four. If Shake wants to call it four, yeah. fine. He lives, <laughs> he in, lives Japan, in Japan, so he can do that. That's all I got to do. You sons of bitches. That's all you, I got to do is get a mailing I, address is, in Japan. There's a, a cartridge over on that wall somewhere that says <laughs> Final Fantasy two. Yeah, I'll beat it over your head <laughs> until there is a little... Two imprinted yeah. into your fucking skull. Man, you're, it is two. You're, you're violent. Yeah. He was worried about you for flipping out, Tyler. <laughs> I'm violent, says the guy who wants his dead body thrown into a blender. I'm dead so already. We can, all, we can all say we're pretty fucked up. We can all say that. I call it creative. I call it morbidly creative. <laughs> Sorry, I think I got some bull shark testosterone. <laughs> yeah, it to be there. I caught quick. a whiff of that. Apologize. Yeah, but no, it's two. It's two. It's two. 
It was two in North America. I'm, and it was two, I'm That's sure, in other statement. places. Probably. So, probably in Europe. Probably. I don't know the details on how and where but, it was released. But. but it gets weird when you're talking about all the other games. Because like, what if you want to talk about the Japanese two? Then what do you call it? Are you going to do that? No, I mean, not, well, on, this, not on this episode. <laughs> 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 all right, Miller said I can never talk about these games. Let me consult the long list of games Miller says I can't talk about. Uh, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3, uh, Final Fantasy 5. Tetris Attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bomberman 2. If, if you're getting ready to give me some bad news, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm behind a couple of episodes. Don't don't screw with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. We never talk about that. Do you hear that, Dave? Nope. Is it is it the Miller beats me over the head with a cartridge train? <laughs> no, I, I, I farted. <laughs> That's a man getting a blowjob asking for two more. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you did not skip a beat before you no. knew exactly what that was. <laughs> hey, just you're gonna get to go through this code one day and figure out why I said it. <laughs> I do hear that. I do hear that man blowjob two machine train coming down the bed. It's the, it's the two more cocks train. Two more. <laughs> two more cocks. So Tyler came up with that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I do. It's the Dave Reed's Wikipedia train. Yeah. Miller, do you still like this? Do you still like this segment? You know that this is my favorite okay. segment. It will never change. Nothing will ever change. I didn't. I haven't stopped it because of you. Well, really. good. Because of you. Yeah, because I'm, I'm scared of you. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> you get very angry when people do things that you, you don't. You give him an SNS cartridge. That's it. <laughs> you have nothing to fear from me tonight, Dave. This is this is neutral ground. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. There Final could, Fantasy there could be some cockfuckery going on. <laughs> Final Fantasy 2. Okay, guys. For the North American release of the 1991 Super NES game, see Final Fantasy 4. Okay, <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> I'm not sure Miller's going to be okay with that, but I'm going to click that link. <laughs> I'm going to find that Wikipedia editor <laughs> as soon as this is over. <laughs> okay, guys. Final Fantasy 4, or as it's known in Japan, Fanaru Fantasy Fo is a role play. All right, Fantasy. Here, here's here's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. If you will refer to it as that uh-huh. for the rest of the episode, <laughs> you can call it for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not be the least bit offended if you will give it the Japanese name for the rest. Of the- All right. It's a role playing video game developed and published by Square, now Square Enix, in 1991. As part of the Final Fantasy series, you might have heard of it. Um, the game was originally released for the Super Famicom in Japan and has since been re released, oh boy, has it, for many <laughs> other platforms with varying modifications. Uh, the game was retitled Final Fantasy II during its initial release outside of Japan, uh, as the original Final Fantasy II and Final Fantasy III had not been released outside of Japan at the time. At the time, Miller, they hadn't. Um, However, later localizations used the original title. The game's story follows Cecil. He is a dark knight as he tries to prevent the sorcerer, Golbez, from seizing powerful crystals and destroying the world. You know what's really weird? I never thought of the game story like that. No? Mm -hmm. How do you think of the game story? I mean, it's it's 100% right, but I... I never really, Golbez never felt like the really the enemy to me. Really, it felt like it was more of like. Did you know it was coming? Cecil against a lot of corruption. Oh, okay, I think that's fair because a lot of that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's pretty much behind all the corruption that happens. Yeah, Golbez is always sort stealing of. those crystals. <laughs> yeah, but you don't. I mean, you don't know that. Yeah, you don't know that unless unless it was spoiled for you. Which it, brings me to was, my next it question: was not. Have you guys played this game before? This was the second super, or the second game I ever beat on the Super Nintendo. What was the first Super Punch Out? Final Fantasy three. Oh man! Oh, you went backwards. Because mm-hmm. I how I did had, you follow the story? I hadn't beat Super Mario World <laughs> or uh, like F Zero or Hook or anything like that. Like I played those extensively, but didn't beat them until I got like one of these games. Well, didn't was it Super Mario World that you waited a while to play? Yeah. 
Because it came with the system and yeah, probably I was like, had to oh, suck. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like that story a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry I ruined your story for when we get to Super Mario World. <laughs> Miller, have you played Final Fantasy 2? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that game I have yeah. played. Yeah. Uh, you, but how? You don't speak Japanese. Well, that's why. I, <laughs> that's why I haven't played Final Fantasy IV. <laughs> or, oh, okay. okay. Or Finish Fanaru. Foro. 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 Oh, now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah uh, this was the first RPG I think that I ever actually played, and um, I did beat it. The first, I've beat it several times because this is. I think I th- I'll enjoy Final Fantasy three more, but I will go back to this one forever because it's the first one. This is what got me hooked on RPGs. So yeah, I love this game. I got really bad, um, you know, nostalgia goggles, as Tyler would put it, <clears throat> for this game. I'm worried about that as well. <laughs> that I'm got bad nostalgia goggles for this because I also played this game. Um, Matt Barger, um, Lord Matt. Um, loaned me this game when I was in middle school and I, I played it then and I finished it. But what sucked was I was like about to move and I wanted to finish this game so I could give it back to him before I moved. So I just played this game like super fast, like really fast. And I got done with it. I played it after playing Final Fantasy three or six. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, okay, he's like, you, lo- you like that? You'll love this. And I played it, played it really fast. Okay, great. It was pretty okay. I didn't like it as much as Final Fantasy three though. Um, so that's my experience with it. I replayed the game mm-hmm. before um, we recorded this show, mm-hmm. and I actually really liked it a lot more as an adult. And maybe it's because I took my time with it. Uh, maybe it has nothing to do with my age difference, but um, I played it this time, and actually I had to really had to wrestle with these, like, is, with the thought of, is this game better than Final Fantasy III? I feel, there are a lot of, like, I feel nuanced elements to Final Fantasy 2 that you wouldn't have got as a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, it wouldn't have been as impactful. You just would have been wanting to get the next most powerful magic spell. And, yeah, so there's... there's, The story is well-crafted, and the game is very driven and well-paced. And this is, like, one of the first Final Fantasy games... I think it might be, like, the first Final Final Fantasy game that had a story like this, Mm -hmm. right? Where you had pre-named characters that each had, like, a background and... Um, they had a story because it wasn't like one, two, and three all just like kind of nameless characters. I know three they reworked mm-hmm. because like the re-release of three, they gave them, they gave all the characters names and backstories and that kind of thing. Well, because I've played, I've played all of those. Two was you had the characters like had names, but you didn't get like that deep of a backstory with them except for one character who's with you at the beginning and then banishes for most of the game and then comes back at the end and is a villain who has to join you. So it has it's not as deep, but they're starting to work on it then. And then three was introdu- introducing the job system, mm-hmm. and it's more Warriors of Light versus Warriors of Darkness, and then it goes back generic again. So I feel like the one that combines all the elements from the previous three is this one, and they do it... I can see why in Japan that this is a big deal to them. Like, this is by far the more popular Final Fantasy in Japan. I thought this game looked pretty bad when I was a kid. I was pretty unforgiving <laughs> yeah. with, the, with the graphics because I was definitely a graphics whore when I was that, that age. And I, I couldn't get past it because it looked more like a Nintendo game to mm-hmm. me. Than the it overworld is a Super bad. Nintendo game. Yeah, go into battle. It's all right. It's okay. Overworld is bad. Mm-hmm. But like, mm-hmm. compare it to Final Fantasy three or slash six that came out years later, and it's it's so much better. Like that game looks so much better mm-hmm. than this game. Uh, like the difference is astounding. It's like yeah. I I feel like it's the same difference from like Final Fantasy three slash six to Final Fantasy seven. Like, I feel like it's a pretty big jump. Because, I mean, 7, like, remember, like, going back, I remember 7, when I first played 7, it was like, holy crap, this game looks amazing. I just, like, turned it on the other day. I was like, wow, this game looks really bad. Yeah. Like, really, really, really bad. Yeah, I had to, I don't think it was, the the way you make it sound, it was a, it it sounds a lot more pronounced than I really, I mean, it was obviously a difference, but going from 6, (laughs) Uh, one of us (laughs) (laughs) going from that to seven i think was really huge but i'm kind of like you i did i did the same thing with seven went back and i was like 
I remember the graphics were so amazing. Yeah, and then, yeah. then to look at it now, it's like it's just a bunch of blocks. What is yeah. this? Mm-mm. This is not what I remember. Because my friend Mitch, you know, I've talked about <laughs> Mitch before. Uh, when I went over to his house, he wanted me to play these games very badly. So he started off, he put in Final Fantasy II, and basically he went through like little demos of every one of his save files where he had, had it saved in different parts of the game. It would show me and tell me about Final Fantasy II, and the same thing with Final Fantasy III, and then he let me borrow them. And said, you should really play through two first, because it will be hard to go back if you play three first. Mm-hmm. So I started out playing two, and I got to The Fiend of Earth. Could not beat him, got frustrated, turned it off, put in three, and played that to completion. And then when I went back to this, I had to restart a new game again. But it was, it was it's a hard transition going from mm-hmm. how much not how much better it looks, but how smooth Final Fantasy three is over two. Yeah, and I think it's um, a much longer game too. I think three is a much longer game than two because mm-hmm. I, I feel like I was able to knock out two. Now, granted, I didn't go hunting down all the best equipment. Yeah, and I didn't get everyone to max level or anything like that. I just kind of played it at a, at a leisurely pace. But I feel like, I mean, I did fall asleep with, with it on several times. So like my time, <laughs> like my game time has no indication how long it took me. Because by the time I got done, I was like at 135 hours. Because yeah. <laughs> I had fallen asleep like four nights. Playing. Well, there's there's a lot more to do um, in three. I mean, it's a lot more open-ended. And I'm, mm-hmm. Get into that. Because, in yeah, two is fairly It's fairly linear. straightforward. Yeah. 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 There's, there's a couple of times where you can go kind of off script. But otherwise, it's yeah completely straight shot right to the end. Because you okay, so you start out ready to spoil the fuck out of this game. Yeah, let's do it. I think so. Because you start. Well, here's one thing that's already different about two is it's a party of five. Is your yeah. how many people you can have? That is different from I think like every other Final Fantasy. Or can you think of another one where you can have five characters in your party at one time? Uh, no, I haven't played them all to be honest. Um, but I can't think of another that has five. Because mm-hmm. um, four played, is pretty much like the standard. I think since since six right and then three i guess well, there was like three player parties since then mm-hmm. i think in eight it was three wasn't it mm-hmm. uh, yeah 10 was three yeah and 10 was three so i don't know i don't know if there's been five since i mean we're we're podcasters we can just make it up no there's never been, there's never <laughs> <Yep>. been <five. laughs> we have that authority yeah so you start off the game starts out you're on the red wings which mm-hmm. is an airship from um baron the Baron. Yeah. That's what I said, the Baron. It's like, that's Gunslinger. From Baron, and you are Captain Cecil, the Dark Knight, and you're on a mission to go get the water crystal from Mycidia. Which is the home to all the mages mm-hmm. in this world. So yeah, you go to Mycidia, and Cecil feels bad about it, but he basically strong arms all the mages, takes their crystal, leaves. You get attacked by monsters. It kind of demos you as Cecil how to play. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this game has been released so many times. This is a really rough incarnation of it. If you haven't played Final Fantasy II, I wouldn't suggest Super Nintendo being the version you play. Really? Yeah. I really? really? I really don't think Wh- so. Which, ver- which version would you suggest? At least one, maybe. I wouldn't even say. I mean, the graphics, you know, you could play a d- version of the game with the same graphics, but have the updated mechanics. <clears throat> oh, Okay. Yeah, because there's like there are a lot of niceties that aren't in this game. Mm-hmm. Like when you buy equipment, Miller, you may be able to correct me, but like when I went to a shop, like I couldn't tell if, if something it, was if an something upgrade was, or if not. If something was better or not, yeah, no, they it was obvious in three because there was right a arrow, arrow indicators, yeah, yeah, but there was nothing like that in this game. Mm-hmm. And then also, um, uh, you couldn't, I couldn't organize my equipment. You know, yeah, I had to like a, manually a, do it. There's a sort button that just puts them next. To, it'll put weapons next to weapons and stuff yeah. like that. But otherwise, yeah, uh, stuff like that. And I thought, like, even like the way you form your party and order them, it's doable. But like, it's not intuitive at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to mess with it for like three minutes before. I mean, oh, big deal, three minutes. But I mean, still, like in final in the later games, it's really intuitive like oh click this guy move him here Mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of stuff like that that just i kind of feel like they missed yeah like um i hear you can get a world map somehow (laughs) like it's an actual item that you have to get an item you have to use hey josh is here here. our fourth guest host has arrived let's start the show over (laughs) hi josh hey man how long have you been at it oh we've been at it 35 minutes but we're we're only like 
We're at Baron Castle. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we just started. All right. But like, I think Cecil just has like fight and item in, yeah. in this one. And in other versions, he'll have fight, dark, which is like a mass attack that hurts all enemies and hurts him half as much as he deals. And then he will have a small pool of like black magic. See, does he does he have dark? Because I got all the way to the point where Cecil changes spoilers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like i got to that point and then i was like oh yeah he's got cover now and then i was like what did he have before then i guess it was dark i don't know like i didn't ever use it i didn't even look for it josh do you know welcome yeah. josh hi uh, yeah he, it actually uh wasn't in the original version okay yeah. and see that's uh, the only version i've played so, ones. so this mm-hmm. is all new to me which version is your favorite because tyler was just saying that he wouldn't recommend someone's first playing in this game be the Super Nintendo version? First of all, this is really great because I couldn't come up with a story. Yeah, it's, so <laughs> yeah, get that, I'm really glad you guys get are... Get that already, mic up in there. I'm really glad you guys already started. There you so, go. Okay. Um, I would actually recommend the uh, Super Nintendo version to the first-time players because uh, Nicole Nance, my wife, mm-hmm. uh, it had just recently started playing, mm-hmm. uh, and I recommended she... She start with the uh, the Super Nintendo version because the uh, uh, my most recent playthrough was on the uh, the Android the uh, I, I forget which remake it was but it's it's the one out for Android now it's the 3D models uh-huh. um, and what do uh, you think of it? it? It was good. There's a ton of load time between battles and stuff really? like that, and I know uh, that would drive her insane. Waiting, you know, just even though it's it's only a fraction of a second, but that little wait every time, uh-huh. you, you know, you see the screen blur whenever you get a uh, in a random battle, and then it takes a minute for your characters to show up, and all the attacks are are take so much longer because all of them are loading too. The animations are loading. Yeah, and I'm sure with uh, it being 3D, they're probably flashier too so they yeah. probably take longer than just your 2d sprite walking up and, and yeah because the, <laughs> the actual summons have animations they appear they yeah. you know they uh do something they move a little bit which is probably great the first time yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you, you do have the auction to skip them and you can change it in the setting so it just skips uh the, the scenes but um but no i i, I think i prefer the uh the um Super Nintendo version. Now, I haven't played the remake on, I think, PlayStation. Oh, there's so many different ones. Yeah. It's See, I couldn't get Meg to, into the Super Nintendo version. She loved Final Fantasy three. I tried to get her on this one, and she just couldn't get into it. But then when I gave her the 3D remake on DS, she was all about that. She absolutely loved that one, which I'm not crazy about the 3D remake either. I just like the updated 2D version. Do you know if it's the same? Is the 3DS version like the same as the, or the DS version the same as the Android version? I, I don't know. I haven't played yeah. the, the 3DS version, but probably if all the, the models know. were super androgynous with no feet, and oh yeah. man, that bothers me so. <laughs> like on the the JRPGs today, like the, the 3D model, they don't have any feet. They're just end and cones. Mm. <laughs> I know Fire Emblem. Yeah. I remember you you were pretty annoyed with them having their feet in Fire Emblem. <laughs> That's why you have to love Kishimoto, who animates Naruto. They're always going to have feet because he so loves drawing feet. toes. Hmm. They all wear sandals because he loves drawing toes. So the more you know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. He's like the opposite of Rob Liefeld, <laughs> who like notoriously does not like drawing feet. <laughs> oh, but uh, to get back the. Uh, um, the the remake that on Android and I'm guessing in the 3DS does have uh, certain features that the old w- version didn't, which is why I played that because I just wanted to check out all the extra stuff. Which there's not a whole lot, but uh, there are a few cutscenes, things like that. Um, there are playthroughs. You get a new game plus, so you can play through. Uh, you get a special ability uh, to you get to unlock all the uh, the special abilities of that were unique to each uh, character that you get on your team and you get to give them and cu- kind of customize your characters like that you can you get them as items and then you can use them on a certain character and you get that ability that's cool i like that because i feel like there wasn't a whole lot of customization no, to the characters no. in in the snes version. it sounds like a whole different game yeah than what you're describing <laughs> really 
And it's a really short game. So I, I mean, I mean, bitching about the long load times and stuff like that. But it's still like a 15 hour game, you know, from start to finish. So. It took me 135 hours on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I fell I fell asleep a few nights playing it. He's just re- he's really super bad at RPGs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm like at level 55. Because <laughs> after let's see, then once. Cecil goes, gets the water crystal, has like a crisis of conscience on his way back, comes back, uh, talks to the king. The king is weirdly mean mm-hmm. to Cecil mm-hmm. and sends Cecil's best friend, Cain, with him with a package they have to deliver. Cain is a dragoon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a dragon knight. I feel like Cain <laughs> is. I know you're not super crazy about Kane, Dave. I love. I mean, I, he's fine. Yeah, more of an Abel kind of guy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I just feel like Abel got a raw in, raw in the so deal I feel, there. I feel like Kane is one of the first, like, very iconic playable characters in in a Final Fantasy. Yeah, I think him or Cecil. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a Cecil. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> team <laughs> team Cecil over here. <laughs> They they start off as pretty much the same character. They're like the dark brooding characters, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, Cecil does have a change. So it's kind of and that's why I like him. Yeah. yeah, I like I like Cecil's arc, and I like that it happens so soon because they get to Cecil does some bad shit, mm-hmm. and he does some bad shit pretty much unknowingly. Um, they get to Mesidia, and all of a sudden, this package that they were sent to deliver, the, the, that the king told them to, to the deliver. To the Village of the Mist. Um, all, all of a sudden, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not Missidia, it's the Village of the Mist. <laughs> and um, it opens up and all these bombs come out, like all these bomb creatures, not like Danger Mouse bombs. <laughs> <with Jesus. laughs> and uh, just destroy the city, pretty much, and um, kills a woman. Yeah, well, actually, yeah. you kill her. Uh yeah, I on, know, your, on your way yeah. there, you're intercepted by right, a dragon. A dragon, a mist dragon. dragon. Yeah, you're going through this cave to get to the city. Uh, the whole time, some booming voice out of nowhere says, turn back, don't come. And then you find out it's coming from a dragon at the end of the cave, right. which you fight, you kill, uh, and then you go into the, the village of mist. And right. you find out that that was the summon of this woman. Mm-hmm. And, with this yeah, and it's the mother of the lone person left standing after right. all the bombs <laughs> blow up, essentially blow up the entire town. So you you realize that now you're alone in a city with a child, a small child mm-hmm. whose mother you just murdered. Right. Like this this game has a lot of dark parts mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, this is it the first, really does. This is the first one where it really is just like when I was playing it the first time, I didn't think anything about it. But, you know, when I sat down and played it again, I was like, God. That's, that's messed up. Did you have the same moment I did? Because like when I replayed it, I was like, "Why didn't I think this was fucked up as a kid?" Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, was I? I really must have just been a monster when I was twelve years old. Well, it's like Josh and his uh, being called a murderer in Fable. You kill, you kill one person and you're a murderer for the rest of the game. Yeah, Josh, I think that's how murder works. <laughs> Wouldn't have been so annoying if everybody didn't come up to you and like fancy a bit of murder, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out the king wanted uh, the town of Mist to be wiped off the map because mm-hmm. that's the only place that summoners or then callers mm-hmm. callers come from, and they basically can summon super powerful creatures to aid them in battle. Right. So now you're escorting Kane when after the explosion, Kane is gone. So it's just Cecil and this little girl that he picks up her unconscious body and walks across the desert to an oasis town trying to help her. And her name is Rydia. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't, for some reason, she doesn't like you at first. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she was actually my favorite character. She was, I think, toward the end of the game, she's the uh, most powerful damage yeah. dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, definitely. So I always, yeah, I always. Uh, I, I think even before the late game. Yeah. She she was for me. As at least. soon as you enter battle, like, when you get there, she doesn't trust you until you get to this the village, the oasis town. You go to bed, and the bear the baron sends soldiers, and Cecil turns traitor against his country, kills these soldiers that have come to finish Rydia, and then Rydia starts to trust him, and then she officially joins your party. And whenever you enter battle with her, even though she's like a seven year old girl, she mm-hmm. has white magic, black magic, and, and calling. Call. She fucking obliterates Cecil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, with Titan. Yeah. Well, she, she doesn't summons. have Titan at the time, does she? She doesn't when she when she gets in your party. But she, like, she only has Kokobo for the first 
<laughs> Here's another <laughs> theme. Oh, I forgot. I'm the, this, this is one where I think I am wrong. Like, I will admit that I'm wrong on this one, but... Horse birds. They're called horse, horse birds. birds. yeah. Yeah, we say chocobos, but there's just cocobos. I don't, I don't know why. Like, I, this is, it's the same reason, like, I, I still say gif, and I don't give a shit. I know I'm wrong. I'm going to say gif. You're not no, wrong. I'm, I say gif, too. That, the, the creators of, of, he's just full of shit. The creator and Blake. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're yeah, both and, wrong. And Blake. But, I mean, Blake, we're, Blake we know is wrong, because we know who Blake is. Yeah. You just look at him, you're like, you're wrong. But the creator of the gif, clearly. But, yeah, I think that's all you have. Even, for the whole time she's little, I think all you have is Chocobo or Cocobo, mm-hmm. because she doesn't get all those powerful summons till later in the game, and without spoiling that, well... Like Which I, I, I thought was weird because she, yeah, does she have, uses Titan. That's what because I remember because yeah, I had Cecil true. like pretty. I took some time and leveled Cecil just to be like, I wonder how long I can go like just taking hits from Rydia. And when she summoned Titan, it's like nothing. It, you don't take damage. It just kind of yeah, yeah becomes it's a cutscene. The, the typical JRPG trope where uh, you fight somebody the and they battle. You can't yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, they are way more powerful. When the computer is controlling them, then when you actually get them on your team. Mm-hmm. But once she joins you, uh, I think then in that same village, Cecil finds his girlfriend there inexplicably. Rosa. Rosa. And Rosa mm-hmm. is passed out, and you need to go get the antidote for her sickness. And Radia goes with you. Do you remember the name of the sickness? Nope. I think it's sand fever. Is that right? I don't know. That sounds right. I mean, what else would you get in a desert? Yeah, <laughs> sand fever, crabs, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe dick fever. I don't know. <laughs> How'd you get dick fever? We don't talk about. Yeah, it. just please get the antidote. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need the antidote right now. <laughs> but when you go um, into this cave to try and find the antidote, that's when you find uh, a wandering old man who joins your party mm-hmm. named Tella, mm-hmm. and. As surprising as like, oh, Rydie is pretty badass. Tella is fucking He's super uh, badass. Man, super he, badass. Everyone else is mortal, and he is a superhero. Yep, mm-hmm. he black, is, black he, mage out the ass. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a sage. He can do black magic and white magic, mm-hmm. which so can Rydia in the beginning. Rydia, Rydia, Cocobo, mm-hmm. Cocobo. Yeah, um, but he, yeah, he can. He's one of the only people that has that powerful magic right in the beginning of the game on both sides of the aisle. He's only got one flaw though, and that's the low his low max MP. Yeah. So he runs yeah. out pretty quick, but he knows uh, a ton of spells. Because when one you of those get him, spells, he has his white magic, black magic, and recall. Because mm-hmm. recall, because he doesn't he hit his head, he doesn't remember all of his spells, so he only has like a small list of like what is is acceptable within your level. But then as you fight, he eventually gets his memory back. Or you can choose recall, and there's a chance he might remember a powerful spell and cast it at random. That wasn't in the super. Yeah, that wasn't oh, in the SNES wasn't? version. Mm-mm. Okay, that that is in then the version, the updated, eight uh, sixteen bit version. Because I remember in the SNES version, like he had, goddamn near everything but Medio. Yeah, at, by the time he gets his memory back, which uh-huh. I guess I'm trying to remember when that happened. It's but. not. I mean, it's still like. Pretty early on, yeah. The shit yeah. he has is still like way more powerful than what you should. Because I remember at the time. he gets. I mean, he gets it pretty soon, and he gains Medio, but like he's like nine MP shy of casting Medio for yeah. like the entire time he's in your party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, what Medio is ninety nine MP, and he has ninety max. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm wanting to say he had. It, he starts off with like the second level, um, like fire, lightning, ice spells, uh, and it takes Rydia. A while just to get the first one. I think she starts off with like one, she has a level one, one skills, yeah. but uh, but yeah, he starts off with the second, and then yeah, you can. Uh, but I think his biggest weakness is he kind of looks like an asshole. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> kind of looks like an asshole. He's got shitty little glasses, they're not even good glasses, they're like the worst kind of glasses. They're like John Lennon glasses. Well, that's th- there's an interesting right, so now we know what you think are the worst glasses, John, John Lennon. Lennon. I think they're the worst glass. I don't think those glasses look good on anybody no No one that's that's a little thing about the game and it's similar with um some of the other final fantasies your character in the overworld can be represented by anybody in your party yeah so yeah but yeah it's i'm like you i would never use tella as my avatar because (laughs) god no he's just this tottery old man walking around he looks like an asshole i couldn't i couldn't wait to get edge or kane because they look totally badass yeah Yeah. kane was always pretty much in the front of my party yeah 
But you go through, you get the the antidote, go back and heal Rosa. Get rid of her dick beaver. Get rid of her mm-hmm. dick beaver. She joins you, and then Tella wants a favor that his daughter... He wants dick fever. <laughs> <laughs> so you give it. <laughs> Tella needs you to go... His daughter is being like seduced by mm-hmm. a prince, yes. and you have to go save his daughter. Named Anna. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By getting the sand ruby in the cave of the antlion. True. So yeah, when you go there, then it turns out like Anna is then sick, and she's not actually being seduced. She's in love with the king of this other castle. Yeah. And but he's he's a coward. Is that Damn Sion? Is that the is that was that the name of the castle? His nation or was that Edges? I can't remember. I can't remember either. Mm-hmm. I just remember because it's like Cyan's a character in Final Fantasy yeah. three slash six. So that's why I was like, damn Cyan. <laughs> I can't remember. I know it was just Prince. But I, did you know he was a prince at first, though? No, you don't know until you show up, essentially. Because yeah. Tella just gives you... Because he's an asshole, and he looks... He is like how he looks. He just gives you all this information. It's like, this guy, hey, yeah. we got to go stop him. Yeah, he's just a fright, frightened bard named Edward. Mm-hmm. That he's worried about Anna, and then Tella, like, all right, fine, come on, let's go get the sand ruby so we can heal her. So, so you go and get that. Mm-hmm. And then you come back, and... Some bad shit's going down. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone's dying <laughs> because Baron, uh, the the new Red Wings, is yeah. Because right? as soon as you step out of that cave, then mm. you see three airships just like do, 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 soar do, do, do. over uh-huh. and then <laughs> start bombing, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they fly off, and then you walk into the ruins of this the castle. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say they probably redo that in the 3D version. It's, <laughs> it's, <probably laughs> it's pretty much the same. Oh really? Yeah, it's I mean a little little different animations maybe, uh-huh. but yeah, pretty much the same. Hmm. Still to, not still not giving that battle <laughs> the do it deserves. Just to jump backwards real quick, the Antlion fight, which is like I guess that's the second boss you fight in the game. I thought that was the hardest fight in the game. Yeah. Oh no, man. I the, had, the Dark Elf. Later on in the game. Yeah, yeah. Dark Elf is pretty hard. Because you yeah. have a weird demon, you, uh, you actually, demon wall. You can't have metal weapons <laughs> uh, against the Dark oh, Elf. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a right. fucking brilliant idea. <laughs> like <laughs> But uh, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a pain in the ass. And I think that's why. And the the fact that you can actually, uh, if if you forget to go and talk to somebody at one point in the game, you cannot yeah. win that battle. Really? Yeah. I didn't know you that. go in and he just wipes the floor with you. Uh, TPK. I think it gives oh, you. Oh, like, I guess it makes sense because, yeah. like, yeah. Are you talking about if you don't talk to Edward? Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think it may give you a hint what uh-huh. you're supposed to do right before you die. Uh, but you, it's still you still die, mm-hmm. you're still game over. Have to reload a save. We'll probably get to that. Yeah. <laughs> At this rate, we might get to it like five episodes, but we will get to it <laughs> eventually. Eventually. <laughs> so yeah, you come into the ruins of the castle. Edward has to stay, and no, does he go with you? Uh, Edward does not want to go with you mm-hmm. um, because he doesn't want to fight. And, well, um, he, he yeah, because he his special to- ability fight. Sing and hide. Yeah, he is by far the worst character in this game. I don't <laughs> yeah. give a shit what anybody says. He is. Yeah, uh, no arguments yeah, here. He is awful. He's the worst. <laughs> but he he doesn't. He wants to stay with Anna because I think she's she's dead. Like, yeah, she, she's dead. She, dead? she dies dead. in the attack. Yeah. You get the item to. But help he does want to stay with her. Right before you can go cure her, she dies in the exp- in the attack by the uh, right by Baron. And Tella goes crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tella loses his mind. And he attacks Edward. Uh huh. He keeps he calls him a spoony bard. Right, <laughs> but he doesn't cast spells. Like I think he just hits him with a stab uh-huh. over and over again. <laughs> I forgot about that. So I remember, oh my daughter, pling pling, oh you spoony bard, pling pling. <laughs> and it's doing this like in the attack screen. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not like a cutscene or like it's like actually in the in battle mode. Because Edward also he looks ridiculous because he's in like. Mm-hmm. A patchwork suit of like six different colors, and he has like the Robin Hood style hat on yeah, his head. He's like super Shakespearean, <laughs> yeah. like I mean, like super super Shakespearean. It's red and green and yellow. It's like yeah, it's, it's the worst. <laughs> he is the worst character in Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> all the Final Fantasy, all, all of them. He's worse than that asshole Tella. <laughs> <laughs> That's then, saying something. <laughs> after uh, then, Tella realizes the real enemy is Baron. Because they they were the ones that killed her, so mm-hmm. then it's his mission to he has to go. He want then he does it. He want to go find the ultimate magic spell so he can destroy Baron. Yeah, that's is that the first time you see Golbez? No, you don't see Golbez no, till for a little while, a little later. Is it okay? I think so. Because after that, then you go to Mysidia. 
you take a bo- you right. take the hovercraft. You get so many fucking vehicles in this game. Yeah, you, a lot. you get like three, three airships. airships. <laughs> it's ridiculous, and you have to specifically use those airships to get to certain right. areas. Because one one can go underground, mm-hmm. the other one can, one can yeah one can go to the moon. One can carry a hovercraft. Carry a hovercraft. <laughs> yeah, and it's like if you want to get to the area that's only accessible by the hovercraft, mm-hmm. and you have like the third airship, you have to like get in that third airship. Go find fly, the go second find airship. exactly. You have to. Find <laughs> There's, no, there's no world maps. Yeah. You have just fly around for 20 minutes until you happen to fly over. And be like, oh, <laughs> land, get out of that airship, get in the first airship, be like, got to find that hovercraft, <laughs> fly around for 15 minutes. Oh, there it is. Use the little crane hook to pick up the hovercraft and then try to find your way back to the, the area you were <laughs> in to begin with. I like I like just bitching about air airships more than I do like trying no, to remember what happens. In I the agree game. that because uh, <laughs> I don't. I said it was a fifteen hour game. That's five hours of it right there, <laughs> just switching vehicles. But once you get to Mesidia, that's where you because beat. you're you're taking a boat. Edward pays for you take a boat to Baron. Yes, and there's a huge vortex. And then you crash. Right. Rydia gets thrown overboard into the vortex because you get Edward it. is trying to steer the ship with Tella. And you then, get attacked by Leviathan. Leviathan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then whenever Cecil wakes up, he's on the shores of Mysidia. Mm-hmm. And then he has to, he just killed a ton of them and he has to walk back right. into the city asking for help. And they hate him. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, they turn him into a pig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did, did you mention the dancers in the game? No, oh, I haven't talked about the dancers about yet. Uh, every city has a dancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go up to this this girl, uh, usually wearing what, like a red dress or something. Mm-hmm. Like a flapper's band. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you go up and talk to her, and she'll dance for you. Mm-hmm. And um, I, is is there any point to that other than just watching? I was going to ask you that. I hope someone there is, knew. There is in the, in a, the remake. Like oh, yeah. If you talk to all of them, it unlocks something. If you I like find that. every one of them, well, I, I didn't. But um, but yeah. Uh, so you in the Mysidia, uh, you talk to one. Uh, she dances for you, and you start feeling woozy. Yeah, you start feeling woozy. You pass out. You wake up as a pig. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, a villager who laughs at you. Yeah, you isn't it like an old woman? <laughs> yeah, it is. So is the is that the dancer? Is the old woman the dancer that? I don't know. That's the mystery. Of the that's dancer, what I, I guess. that's what I always assumed was she was in disguise as a pretty, a pretty young dancer. I, I'm rolling with it. Yeah. I like that head fiction. Well, sounds fine <laughs> to me. So this is where you actually meet two of my favorite characters. Oh, I'm so mm-hmm. glad you said that. Mm-hmm. Here I thought we were at odds. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> These are two of my favorite characters. The, in, fi- in Final Fantasy, the lead mage of Mysidia says they're not going to help you until you cleanse your heart and basically cast off all your sins and you have to go to Mount or take the test at Mount Ordeals. Right. And he sends his two apprentices with you to help. Mm-hmm. Palom and Poron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The twins. One a black knight, one or a black mage, and one a white mage. And they're what their white, power twins. White wizards. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they cause it's it's it felt like it was such a long time when I played it as a kid, but you're really not with them like nope. that long at all. They're not in your party get, long at all. You get very attached to them very quickly. Yep. Yeah. Well, because they have the most character out of like everyone you've met so far. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like, yeah. and they're like the most like energetic and yeah, positive. They, uh, they have their own unique relationship with each other, uh-huh. with uh, Cecil, with their teacher, the the guy who sends you on the quest. Yeah, they act. Uh, differently, yeah, they, they do have a lot of character compared to. I know you like Kane, but he's mm-hmm. pretty much just the dark, brooding hero, mm-hmm. which was what Cecil was at the beginning too. I just like dragoons. Yeah, I like dragoons too. We didn't talk about Kane's ability is jump, mm-hmm. where he just jumps really goes off screen. He jumps so high and comes down for double damage on a later turn. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, Palom and Porum are very likable characters. Mm-hmm. They're uh, two young mages, magi. Yeah. So you go then to Mount Ordeals, which is a little way to the east. And once you get there, you realize that somebody else is also there trying to, I guess, cleanse themselves of their stupidity. <laughs> uh, Tella. He is yeah. um, on Mount Ordeals because he is trying to get back the knowledge of Medio, and he goes there to do it. But just a side note, this is where, if you want to, I think it's here or right after this is where you can go around to the other side of the mountain and power level. If you so choose, there's a place where you're on the same map, but there's much harder monsters and you can go and power level yourself up for an hour and gain like 15 levels. Oh, cause you had, now you have Tella with all his 
badass magic. Well, you've got so. the twin magic. Yeah. Right. Because I remember they pound and pour them once they meet Tell, they kind of soften Tell's heart a little bit because he's looking at young mages again and he that helps him get over some of his issues. Is just being around them. Yeah, and he actually helps because Poron, the black mage, doesn't want to cast fire because he's still freaked out from where the Red Wings had bombed the. Or no, it was Rydia. Rydia couldn't cast fire. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, because she has to clear ice out of a like yeah. a passageway. Yeah, that we that was earlier on in the game. I think yeah, we skipped I, I forgot about that. Yeah, she she learned all. She can learn all these spells, but will never learn a fire spell because she doesn't want to cast fire because she's. Freaked out from the bombing. Mm-hmm. Early on. Yeah, it so, does take a long time until she has fire. Right? Another, another yeah. dark part of the story where <laughs> yeah. it's like somebody dealing with yeah. serious <laughs> mental issues. Um, we haven't really talked about Palam and Porum's special ability. You mentioned it, mm-hmm. the, t- the twin power, where they can essentially, when you got both of them in your party and select to use their twin, their twin ability, they cast extremely powerful yeah. magic. Comet uh-huh. and um, Flare, I think, mm-hmm. is the other one. Something like that, yeah. But they're both super powerful, just crazy, crazy damage. Mm-hmm. And it, they use a lot of MP yeah. as well, which I didn't realize at first because when I was going through, I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is going to be a breeze. I did it like three times. I was like, why is it not? Oh, okay, because all of my, all of my MP is gone. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's here. Like You go to Mount Ordeals, you go up, so Tella gets his magic back. And then Cecil has to go in to basically this room with a large mirror. And then his reflection comes to life as the dark part of himself. And he has to defeat the dark part of himself. And once you do that, you then he turns into a paladin. Mm-hmm. Cleans, Lev- takes off the, all the, the darkness and becomes light. Level one paladin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it does not scale his level up at all. Nope. So if you've power leveled and gotten him up as high, it doesn't matter. He starts out at one. So as soon as you walk out, go through one fight, he'll gain like five or six levels mm-hmm. all at once. Because he's, as a Dark Knight, he has high offense and low defense. And then as a Paladin, that flip-flops. Right. He's meant to tank. And his abilities are cover, uh-huh. where he can take all the damage for somebody. And then he has white, a small pool of white magic. And, I mean, his character portrait looks good. He takes off his helmet. And you see now he's, of course, a handsome, like, blonde, blonde man. He's a handsome boy. But his battle portrait <laughs> mm-hmm. is one of the most ridiculous... <laughs> Oh, I was, I remember, I remember I was like, had a visceral reaction because I was just like, he looks so fucking stupid. I didn't like, I didn't like his, oh uh, man, I didn't like his sprite when I was a kid. I, I didn't bother me playing through it this time because I was like, he just looks like typical night, early 90s anime guy. Mm. Because, like, I mean, he looks completely different than his portrait. Everyone does, pretty much. Like, the portraits don't match up with the sprites. Mm-hmm. Some better than others. Like, Palom and Porum's a pretty good match. Uh, Intella, he's still, he looks like an asshole both forms. <laughs> um, but, like, Cecil, because, like, I guess it's a, he's supposed to have black hair, but, like, they kind of went crazy with the highlights because, like, he has purple hair. And it's all, like, swept to the side, and he's wearing this, like, gold circlet down below. Mm, yeah. Uh, he just looked, like, when I, I hated it when I was in middle school. But, like, going through this time, I was like, yep, looks like an early 1990s good guy anime character. Well, like, his sprite has, like, a 16th century prince's outfit. And then on his overworld map, it looks like he's wearing, like, a purple sack on his head when you turn around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the remake isn't much better at all. He just looks so fucking androgynous. You, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure he's got tits. <laughs> pretty <laughs> sure. That's not androgynous. <laughs> well, well, he's got a dick, too. So, he's oh, good. Oh. so we're all very confused. Yeah. yeah. And is it then on the way as you're leaving, that's when Mylon attacks you? Yes. Okay, and then every other version he's named. I guess they realize Mylon is kind of a weird name mm-hmm. for like a big evil. It rhymes so they, with nylon. It's like <laughs> <laughs> so they rename him Scarmiglion in all the other versions. Scarmiglion. <laughs> That's weirder. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more evil. But Mylon is just like this little brown cloaked wizard that you fight, and then once you kill him, then it's like, oh, you done fucked up now, mm-hmm. because he is much stronger in undeath, and then attacks you from behind. And then you have once you beat him, that's he, he's the Baron has sent him or not the Baron, but he's one of the generals. Uh, yeah, the generals of Golbez. I think they they've mentioned Golbez they mentioned at this Golbez. point. I think okay. I think uh, this is where they first mentioned Golbez. Yeah. I think. Uh, but Golbez has four generals working for him, and each one represents an element. The four and fiends. The four fiends. Yeah, four mm-hmm. fiends. Uh, Scarmiglion represents. Uh, he's the elemental fiend of Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think 
I always remembered him like turning into like a tentacle monster. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he turned. Okay. And he has it, like his, bursting out of his back, and he's yeah. a he's a hunchback with tentacles coming out of his hunch. His face looks like a dog's skull or something like that. It's mm-hmm. really it's yeah. pointed and kind of white. I didn't think that any of the fiends were super memorable. Honestly, I like I thought the idea of having four elemental fiends was mm-hmm. was cool, but like the only one that I can really remember is the water one. Just because he looks, yeah, because yeah, he looks like a turtle, yeah, and he's got dude's face. He, he's got the the waves. I oh. forgot her name, but well, uh, Val- Ru- it's, Rubricant. It's, Ru- it's Rubicant. my, my lawn or Scar Miglion, <laughs> Cagnazzo, Valvalis, and Rubicant. Yeah, he was my favorite just because he was his friend. He's very chivalrous. He's the he, first lawful evil yeah, villain you really fight. You're Ru- about Rubicant. to, you're, yeah, you're about to fight him, and he heals you. He'll he, uh, heals the party, restores your MP before you fight. He him. wants to defeat fair. you at your best, so you yeah. know you're defeated. Yeah. <laughs> but when you defeat Mylon, this is where I couldn't beat Mylon in his second form. That's where I stopped playing the first time. Hmm. But once you beat him, then you realize what you have to do. Like who's going to be coming after you now? So then, now that you're a paladin, you go back to Mesidia, and they tell you you need to go stop the Baron, to go to the Baron and stop the King. You're the one that's prophesized mm-hmm. about um, because there's a prophecy that that they play at the beginning, the very beginning of the game. Um, and by doing this and be- becoming a paladin, they realize that you're the you're the one that the prophecy is about. Born so, of light and of darkness. I can't remember all of it. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty damn good. And they send you in. You take a boat over to Baron. And Cecil Tella Palamon Porum, let's go. Let's fucking kill the king right now. <laughs> storm the castle. <laughs> yeah, you storm. You storm the castle. You fight. Um, I forget his right hand man, who was a friend of Cecil's growing up, but he's been corrupted by Golbez. Yeah. You fight and kill him, and then you get to the king, and it turns out the king this whole time has been the elemental fiend of water. Because I think the original thing you're going in to do is just talk some sense into him. You weren't mm-hmm. going really to kill him. Yeah, that's not a very... That's when you, I just became a paladin. I'm going to go <laughs> fucking kill the king. <laughs> <laughs> Born of light, bitches. So you... Yeah, he turns in and Cagnazzo attacks you, which is a pretty rough fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he'll summon that wave of water around you, and if you're not careful, it'll... Sweep through and nearly kill everybody. Isn't isn't it one of those battles where you've he starts counting down and then you've you've got well, to hit him? As I think as when he draws the water up, yeah. if you attack him while the water is drawn uh, up, he releases out. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you got to wait till he's not. It's like the the Magitek armor or the the snail in the beginning of three. Mm-hmm. The whelk. Yeah. The whelk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> your best tell is your best option casting bolt three. Yeah. Uh, on him, but then tell can only do that like. Just a few times, and he's out of MP. Mm-hmm. But you defeat Cagnazzo. He's an asshole. He's an asshole. <laughs> you defeat Cagnazzo, and you're happy about what you've done. And so you go to leave. It turns out Cagnazzo had one last trap for you. As you're leaving, suddenly in the hallway, the doors lock and the walls start moving in on you to crush you. Yeah. Yeah. And I hated this part. Man, as a I did kid. Too. I hated it even as an adult. I don't I didn't notice it as a kid. It wasn't until later that I had one of those you just killed somebody's mom and now you're taking a moments. Yeah, I had, it had to happen later when I realized, oh my God, that's messed up. Yeah, so the walls are closing in on you, no one knows what to do. So can't open the door. Yeah. Palam and Porum go to either side, brace themselves up against the walls and cast stone on each other. So then they're all, they're there as statues holding back the wall to they, save Cecil they, Tella. They lay down their lives. That's, they, you know, you got to admit, that's some pretty out of the box thinking. That yeah. It's yeah. Pretty you're right. For some 13 year olds. Yeah, because yeah, Tella's super upset because, like, I'm old and about to die. You guys were super young and had your lives ahead of you. Yeah, He's because mad at himself. Because Tella tries to bring them back. He, he tries to do, like, stone to flesh kind of deal. And yeah, says, he just he, keeps casting soft. Over right, and soft, over and over you. again. And uh, says that he can't do it because they they cast the spells on themselves willingly. Yeah. Um, so that's it. That's it for them, mm-hmm. kind of. Um, later on in the game, if you go back there and you go up to either of them as statues, your inventory opens up. Um, like you can use an item on them. Sometimes at certain por- certain points in the game, you walk up to something and it prompts you to use an item, and it does when you walk up to, to either Palom or Porum. And it, um, it's awful. It's so awful that they do this to you. Yeah, because there's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. There's nothing mm-hmm. in your inventory that you can use to bring them back. And, like, as far as I know, 
and that's like still debated on that's like one of those things that's still <laughs> debated on the goddamn internet <laughs> is like someone will say no there's nothing you can do to bring Palamaporum back but it opens that inventory box so there must be something no there's there's not that's just yeah. something that they did to like twist the knife mm-hmm. yeah I have I, I've often wondered like this is probably I think the most emotional scene in a game for Super Nintendo yeah and it's easy, like nowadays, with a game that has you know the the full music and graphics and things to make an emotional thing, like in uh, the the Last of Us. Like there's a lot of emotional moments in that game, but that's yeah. a lot easier to convey. But the music that plays when they do that is so just like it really gets mm-hmm. you. The music in this game is amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I've got great things to say about Uematsu, who's done like all the final, well, most of the Final Fantasy music. But like I think I think the music in this game is probably some of his best. The crystal theme from this one is my favorite version. But we're now we're getting to that the hour hour twelve of, okay. epi- of episode one. All right, Final Fantasy two. Let's shut it down. To be continued next week, mm-hmm. part two. I just want to nope. uh, interject nope. something real quick. <laughs> nope. Shut up. We're ending with Palom and Forum. No, the Square gonna... Enix uh, oh. has released <laughs> their. Um, they get, uh, what, shit, what is it? Well, it's like Mojito Swipe or something like that. Uh, it, Are you yeah, having a stroke, man? No, it's, uh, I'm trying to think of the name <laughs> of it. Mojito it's, Swipe. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a Candy Crush ripoff game. <laughs> oh, okay. They've released, uh, it was all, oh, I saw that on Reddit today. Yeah. It's like the death yeah. of Square Enix, yeah. Yeah, so they went from games like this to now Candy Crush Saga ripoff. Microtransaction <laughs> yeah. bullshit, yeah. So I just wanted to mm. throw that That one out there, Final so Fantasy know. game. Um, where they have every character from Final Fantasy that you can play. Oh, All you do like is the... swipe on the screen left to right. Every character's there, and it's just like swipe as fast as you can fighting this enemy until they it, die. Is it the rhythm game? I know they had no, a rhythm the game. The theatrhythm game. game. Oh, yeah. theatrhythm game is actually really good. I liked oh, yeah. it a lot. It's this really mobile game is just... Hmm. Your characters die left and right, and it costs you like a dollar to bring them back. But Josh, I see why that came to mind, because... Palom and Parham turned themselves to stone, and Square Enix is now turning itself into stone. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. that makes sense. Hey, as long as they come out with Bravely Second, I'm, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. But before we wrap it up, because we're going to save achievements and beards and glasses and all that for, for when we finish the talk about this game. Stay tuned. So today is, I mean, this is not the release day. Today's the 16th, mm-hmm. which is Jacob York of Wolf Fighting Fame's birthday. So I think to end the show, we should call Jacob and wish him a happy birthday. Okay. Like we did Blake. And we love Jacob, like, probably more than Blake, so we should probably call him too. Jacob, he might take offense to that. <laughs> probably more than Blake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you mean, probably? It, it doesn't occur to you that Blake might take offense to that. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> Jacob? Yeah. Hey, man. What's up? You're supposed to be coming to the speakers, but you're not. You're supposed to be coming to the, to the soundboard, but you're not. I don't know what's up. That's okay. We can hear you, I think. Oh, you guys, you guys can hear me all right? Good. good. Yeah, okay. we can hear you. I can hear you guys okay. Oh, good. We're recording Tadbog. Yeah, what's up, Tadbog? So, so happy birthday, Jacob. Happy birthday. So happy birthday. Yeah, happy thank birthday. You. Thank you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it, you guys. You couldn't let me get my happy birthday out without jumping <laughs> in there? <laughs> really? From, from who, who all is there? You can't tell by our voices? I, so, I can't. I, I, I hear. I've heard Tyrone and Dave. I thought I heard another voice. I'm not positive. It's, it's, it's Josh. It's, it's Sean Miller doing the Josh it's, impression. It's, 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 it's Josh. I just wanted to say happy birthday <laughs> and uh, how much I miss you. <laughs> no, it's Miller oh. and Josh. And Josh. Seriously. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, everyone. Hey, Jacob. That sounded like a disappointed. Oh. Oh, well. Oh, I thought okay. People, wow. Oh, I thought people I gave a shit about. Oh, okay. Hey, Jacob. Yeah, what's up? Um, Miller told me that you used to wear a lot of Dave Matthews Band t-shirts when you were in high school. Yes, I did. I did, too. I think we would have been good friends in high school. I think we would have hit it off. I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's... But I'm glad that we met later in life. Mm-hmm. Um... Because our dicks were bigger. I feel like we, uh, <laughs> our, our friendship was like more consolidated. But yeah, I did. I had a couple of, I had a couple of Dave Matthews band shirts. I used to love Dave Matthews. That's band. not the more Miller put it. Like all you had was Dave Miller. <laughs> Dave Miller. <laughs> what? Where, where, where the fuck did that come from? It's, I don't know. Dave Matthews. <laughs> I had to. Ex- no, I had to explain. True. I didn't have. But 
I did have like, I think I had like three, which was a significant amount. Maybe I just wore them too much. <laughs> Jacob, I think I also had three that I had on rotation. Did you have, did you have the same three? Six shirts mm-hmm. and just rotate them. <laughs> yeah, because I remember having uh, Coach Brewster's PE class, and I was like, what the fuck is up with you in these Dave Matthews shirts? Like, are you really that big of a fan? Like, you were you were a Dave Matthews fanatic before Taryn knew it was cool. Yes. Before yeah, Taryn spent $20,000 to see when, him. That was when t- Taryn was into Limp Biscuit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she really uh, liked our... I was into, like, the first Dave Matthews band album I thought was Remember Two Things. Nice. Check Which, you out. Kicking yeah, it old school. If that, if that tells you anything about my, my bona fides. Mm-hmm. You got you got cred, man. You got fire dancer cred. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, thank you. So, but I mean, I have since been far surpassed. I don't. I, I guess I kind of stopped listening to them in uh, in college. Was <laughs> kind of just kind of. I, it's it was like musical theater for me. I just grew out of it. So you would ask on Facebook for people to post memories, their memory of a memory of something of yours together. So I'm just going to tell you mine now on Tadpog. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have it's hard. I had I have a lot to choose from. But I I will always very strongly remember when we got a when we used to live together at Murray State and when we got evicted. And yes. cuz Leva would stay the night at our apartment and our landlords came and chewed us out saying she didn't live there and she was not allowed to stay the night. And if it happened again they were going to kick us out. So at the end of either my game or Ramon's game, everybody came over to play D&D, and we played all night long. So when the landlords yeah. came over and saw six cars there from the people that were playing D&D, they evicted us the next day. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand how you can't have a girlfriend who stays at your house. That's- because they, uh, they would shower, and water was included with rent. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was awful. It was probably, um, you know, in, in some respects, it was probably the, one of the nicer places I've ever lived, but it was also the worst place that I've ever lived just because I hated dealing with those people. They were I still awful. I much more fond memories of the awful shithole above Victor's. The, the hundred dollar month apartment. Yeah, I live there too. The place where the rent was super cheap, but I think we were paying electricity for everybody in that whole fucking it's like building. Two hundred bucks a month electricity, a hundred bucks for rent. There were at least two murders that happened on the front steps. Well, that's just, why, Jacob. Why did you finally move out of that apartment? Um. Well, uh, the the one above Victor's. Yes. I don't remember if there's I, a story behind that. I remember. I yeah, there was one that. moment where you realized like. All right, I need to move out of here because you went down to get in your car, and there was oh, blood was all over your hood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I moved out after a guy I gave a ride home to paid me in drugs. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky he didn't pay yeah. you in sex. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, I was coming home from work. He was sitting at the bottom of my stairs, asked me for a ride home. I said, "What the fuck? Why not?" And uh, gave him a ride home. He pulls down a sock, pulls out a bag of drugs, and hands it to me. <laughs> I like that. The, I like that it's just drugs. It's, yeah. I mean, it's just, oh, I don't. I don't remember what it was, and I didn't know at the time. He, he pulled out a bag. It was just labeled drugs. <laughs> say, yeah. it, it gave it to a, you. Has a piece of masking tape with drugs. <laughs> you know, drugs and, and a crude sharpie. blue marker. <laughs> Daryl's drugs. I do remember uh, very distinctly, like coming out. The next day after my car was covered in blood, which I never washed, by the way. <laughs> you never you never cleaned out the inside of it either, by the way. Well, yeah, that's true. But still, I just drove around with human blood covering the front of my car, which definitely shows you how much I cared about my, myself and my things when I was in college. Um, I remember coming out, like, uh, the next day and seeing... One of the dudes who lived below us, and he was all bandaged shut up, and I was like, oh, hey, man, how are you doing? He was like, oh, dude, I'm sorry. I fell through the front door of my apartment, and I bled all over your car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, that's the price I pay for living here. I made this decision. <laughs> hey, Jacob. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. There's a birthday question we always ask when we call people and wish them a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Okay. Do you own any? Do you own any Looney Tunes shirts? What? What? One more time. Do you own any Looney Tunes shirts? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Happy birthday. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, what we. Kind of a human being do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we love you, and happy birthday again. Happy birthday, Jake. Thank, thank you, guys. I love you, too. Bye. You'll have some good sex. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> Bye. Bye. What's his Bye. name? <laughs> how, do I, how do I end the show again? What do I say? Tropical thanks, Capricorn. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes or iTunes Stitcher. Stitcher. Man, so you were lost next episode. Yeah, I was totally lost. I, just, I was thinking about Jacob having sex. <laughs> I just couldn't go anywhere else. Gross. <laughs> let's, let's, all let's all take a moment to think of Jacob having sex. Mm -hmm. You know, tr Truncate Silence is going to take that out. <laughs> I'll have to go back and edit, edit, edit Silence. In silence. <laughs> Uh, next week we talk about Final Fantasy again. Yeah, this so this no one, this there. game, yeah, again. <laughs> <laughs> but while you're there checking things out on iTunes or Stitcher, leave us a five star review. Mm -hmm. uh, you do that on Stitcher, but we it's also know. on iTunes. Yeah, <laughs> we won't know if you do. Uh, it helps us out a lot, and it gives you some control of the show because you leave us a five star review, and you can write something in there with it. Mm -hmm. And if you write, say, a game you want us to play, request a guest host for that game or some other game. If you need us to be your emergency contact mm -hmm. or give you an alibi, mm -hmm. all things you can do. Mm -hmm. And we promise, look, whatever game you or guest host you put up there, we will get to it eventually. eventually. Hashtag Morshawn Miller. Yeah. Deal. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> I hear you like me, and I like you too. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're going to be back. We're going to finish talking about Final Fantasy 2 slash Final Fantasy 4. In the meantime, if you can't get enough Tadpog goodness, you can always find us on tadpog.com unless the server is down in which case you can't find us but you know what they got through that they up, they updated our server we don't have to worry about that again probably for another year um the show notes live there on tadpog.com um check it out we've been putting a lot of porn on there so we we know you love it um it gets us a lot of hits it does get us a lot of hits um i've been corrected or not corrected Several people have told me since the last episode came out that James Dean was the name of the porn star who we couldn't remember the name of. So throw a whole bunch of James Dean up there, dog. Uh, All right. You can also find us on Facebook. We are at facebook.com slash Tadpog. There's a lot of cool people there doing a lot of cool shit. If you haven't made your way there yet, Eh, check it out. Give us a like, and uh, you'll see all our episode posts. Um, I posted something about Surge coming back. Um, got more likes in the episode that we... <laughs> yeah, and, and far further reach. Like like the like the Facebook statistics is like, wow, you've got a post that's doing really well. I was like, awesome, what is it? Oh, Serge. <laughs> that's great. And I was like, well, you know what? I used our Amazon affiliate link so uh, for that post, so maybe we made some money on that. <laughs> Amazon.com to do. Oh, no, didn't make anything. Oh, well. <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter. We are at Tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome, I realize, but the asshole Tella has at Tadpog. So there's nothing we can do about it. Um, follow us. We really appreciate it. And thanks for everybody who's retweeting. Um, if you want to give us a call um, and ask for more Miller, that's fine. You can reach us at 270 883 2555. Uh, try to keep it under three minutes. We really like questions, especially ones that are sexually related, Ninja mm -hmm. Turtles related, or both. Uh, video games, we like questions about those too. Golden Girls. Gold I feel like the Golden wow. Girls era Golden is Girls. over and now we're in like Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> because we get a lot of one, now we get a lot of the other. The Golden Girls era is over, we're in Platinum Girls era. <laughs> um, and I guess if you want to leave some man pod questions, you can. Mm -hmm. um, the ladies, some ladies, I don't know who yet. Uh, Dior or, or text, so they have to read them. Yeah, we prefer text, because then they, whatever dirty shit you say, they'll read. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for coming on. Miller for the whole thing, Josh for half of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll count this as a half, Josh. Well, like When you tally who's done more episodes, you and Nicole. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll, round, we'll round down, like in D&D. &D. <laughs> so, ooh, sorry, this one doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the score? She you were tied. And now you're still tied. Because you, you came in Fair. late. So right after, after, well, after this, yeah, you'll be one and a half, one and a half up. So I'll come in for a half an episode next time. That sounds good. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just do the the 
first half of the second part of this and just leave halfway through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the stinger should be Josh just talking for a half an hour so he can so he can claim a full episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just sitting here alone in Ted Park Studios. <laughs> They turned out all the lights, sir. No matter. Get up and turn them back on. I, I, I asked Dave for a ride home, but I uh, guess I'm sleeping here tonight. <laughs> I especially love it when you start doing the Josh voice, Josh. <laughs> That's my favorite thing, I think. It's like the world is almost going to end or something. <laughs> so until next time. Tropical Capricorn. Capricorn. I thought we were doing the Josh voice. Capricorn. Oh, we should have done the Josh voice. Next time. Next time. Tune in next week while I do the Josh voice. You know, you are a um, frequently asked for guest host. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, that's someone, nice to know. Someone, I can't remember who it was, started a hashtag, hashtag more Miller. Really? Yeah. Phil, yeah. Was it Phil? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So there you go. That's why I want them to be able to hear you. I'm glad. That that makes me happy. Where is Phil, anyway? Oregon. Oregon. Phil's, oh, Phil's a guy in Oregon. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Out in the middle of nowhere. That's awesome. Thanks, Phil. There you go. Okay. You're welcome, mm-hmm. Phil. You fucking owe us <laughs> 20 more dollars, please. <laughs> we brought Miller back. <laughs>